While the ending of Come Fly With Me is easily one of the most iconic moments of FNV, the quest itself is one of my least favorite, as it's essentially a drawn out fetch quest. The player likely starts the quest in Novak during the main questline, then fights their way through Feral Ghouls on their way to Repcon test site. They meet Jason Bright, a ghoul messiah hoping to lead his followers to the Great Beyond, a supposed utopia in outer space. Jason sends you to the basement to deal with a group of Nightkin led by the deranged Davison. After getting rid of the Nightkin, you go upstairs to talk to Jason, then have to go all the way back down to the sub-basement to speak to him again. Now you collect parts around the wasteland to help the ghouls reach the Great Beyond. This potentially makes you travel into a highly irradiated area filled with golden geckos, and then go back to Repcon again. Then you're forced to pay up to 500 caps for another part, and that money is never reimbursed to the player. It's possible to collect both parts without returning to Repcon in between, but if it's your first playthrough, you likely don't know where the other part is until you're given a map marker by going back. Finally, you return to Repcon one last time and can either help the ghouls complete a successful launch or sabotage it. It's easily one of the longest quests in the game and one of the few quests in it that I actively avoid. Unfortunately, the player also needs to complete it to get the best possible ending in Novak. That said, I do love aspects of it. Both the dialogue and characters are memorable, the way Davison becomes hostile if you move their imaginary leader Antler is an awesome detail. Antler loves me, not you! The fact that Chris Haversam believes he's a ghoul because he's going bald is hilarious. Just the premise of a crazed cult of ghouls flying into outer space for salvation is totally ridiculous and perfectly represents the goofy side of the series. It's worth noting these issues were partially due to Obsidian's inexperience using Bethesda's engine. Project director Josh Sawyer revealed that Come Fly With Me was the first major quest implemented in New Vegas. Trivia, that was the first major quest we wrote, and Novak slash Repcon test site slash Clark Field slash Ranger Station Charlie slash Gibson Scrapyard was the first region we built. I wouldn't say it's one of the top quests of FNV, but it is literally the first major quest we designed, so our inexperience with the engine shows. It's been a long time since I played Come Fly With Me, but if I recall correctly, there's a ton of back and forth that can get frustrating. And of course, there's also some interesting cut content as well. There's unused armor called Repcon Jumpsuit. It's unknown why it was cut since the armor was finished. It likely would have been worn by the long dead pre-war Repcon employees found throughout the building. There's a cut option to start the quest by talking with Jenny Mae Crawford and Novak. The player could ask her, what are they doing? And she'd reply, I don't know what they're up to and I don't want to know. I just hope no harm comes to Novak. Not much to live off of around here except salvage from that factory. If they made off with anything expensive, we'd be hurting something fierce. But I will say this, if all of them turned up dead tomorrow, I couldn't see as to how they'd be missed. That might even be a desirable thing, knowing the town was safe from the likes of them. There'd be a reward in it if some brave soul made it happen. There's also a cut dialogue option to tell her the ghouls are dead. After choosing this dialogue, the player would receive 150 experience and positive reputation in Novak. That is a load off. Nothing to be done though. Those ghouls just didn't know when they weren't wanted. Couldn't take a hint. And aren't you just the most unexpected gift our little town ever had? Here, take this, and go buy yourself something nice. 
There's an unused NPC named Repcon Testman. His dialogue options advanced some of the quest variables for Come Fly With Me and was used to test the quest line. He even has a few lines of placeholder dialogue. Hi, Repcon Quest stuff. Have at it. Okay, I'll add the quest. Sure thing, buddy. Later on in development, an NPC was created for testing all major quests, rather than just one, called Testicles the Debug Centurion. The name Testicles is actually a reference to another debug character from a Black Isle title, Planescape Torment. I had a friend with me when those mutant bastards came out of nowhere. She panicked and ran the wrong direction. Further into the basement, she's probably dead. But I ain't leaving until I know for sure. During the quest, the player finds a ghoul named Harland in the basement. Harland asks you to find his friend, who's been captured by Davison and his nightkin. In the final game, Harland's friend is dead, but there's over 20 unused player lines suggesting you could have rescued her. Not just that, one line implies there were once three ghoul prisoners being held hostage. The dialogue reveals you could have saved them by killing the Nightkin, or by giving them stealth boys so they could sneak out. One of Davison's cut lines, you can release the prisoners, I promise they're of no threat, implies you could convince Davison to release them, likely by passing a speech check, or perhaps by helping the Nightkin find the stealth boy shipment they're searching for. For. Optionally, you could just kill the hostages after saying, No, I just wanted to come down here to kill you up close. There is also an unused faction linked to the quest called Feral Ghoul Prisoners. It's possible that Harlan's friends were feral ghouls at one point in development before they were outright cut. Later in the quest, Chris sends the player to Gibson's scrapyard to look for the thrust control module. However, he originally told the player to ask Harlan for advice on where to find it. If the player asked Harland about its location while he was still trapped in the basement, he'd go on a rant. If the player asked Harland after he escaped, he'd be more helpful. These lines were likely cut to streamline the quest. He did, did he? I swear, I should tear the rest of the hair out of that cocksucker's head. Send a rescue mission after Harland? Nah, let's just send some smooth skin whose radio got broke. Harlan's tough. He probably enjoys waiting to be attacked at any moment. He probably loves eating nothing but roach meat. Licking up condensation from a rusted pipe is his idea of fun. So is doing business in a corner and smelling it for days. But oh, that's right. The crisis is that you need some computer parts. Well, you can go fuck yourself until you get my friends out of this mess. And I thought I was old. It's a junk shop east and slightly north of here. There's an old woman running it. Gilbert or something. There is also a cut line where the player could ask Davison about the Master, the antagonist of Fallout 1. Davison led some of the Master's Nightkin, and this would have been a great throwback to classic Fallout. I've mentioned this before, but you could once find the food sanitizer item from Fallout 3 in the Repcon basement. Since they don't work properly in New Vegas, they were eventually patched out. It's too bad this was cut, as it would have been one of the best items to have during hardcore playthroughs. Further, it would have made the basement a little less tedious to explore, as the area itself is a confusing labyrinth. Not as bad as some of the vaults in New Vegas, but still easy to get lost in. The Nightkin and Harlan portion of the quest was actually a separate quest, once called Like Water for Stealth Boys, but it was later consolidated into Come Fly With Me. At the climax of the quest, one rocket veers way off course and presumably crashes soon afterwards. When asked if it was ever going to appear somewhere on the Mojave, Josh Sawyer replied, yeah, we had talked about having the rocket crash somewhere, but like anything, we just didn't have the time or resources to devote towards it. It would have been an awesome moment of reactivity to be wandering out in the wasteland and stumble across the wreckage of one of these rockets, maybe crashed into the side of a mountain, or in the rubble of a newly destroyed building. 
Have you wondered what actually happens to the rockets after they take off? Well, any time your perspective is locked, there is typically a good reason for it. In this case, the rockets are disabled just outside the player's view. If you quip through the silo dome, you can find the static models of the rockets left over from the launch scene. I love hidden content like this that the player would normally never see. After the launch, there's a great little detail where every single living feral ghoul in the Repcon building is disabled as if they went along on the journey to the great beyond. This quest also has some interesting script notes like, if Chris sabotaged the rockets, he kills himself. How emo. Due to this being one of the first quests worked on, all of this was likely cut very early in development. Despite the cut content and Obsidian's inexperience, this is undoubtedly one of the coolest moments in one of the best video games of all time.